good morning, good afternoon, good time zone to all. Um, okay, are you ready to dive right in, good friend? I was born ready to dive in. Sick, yes. I love that. Okay, here we go. A sip of water. The anticipation. Okay, here we go, guys. Oh, do you want to do that? And I'm Nick. Are you familiar with our startup? I'll say I'm Rachel and you just say I'm, I'm Nick. Okay, sure. I'll say. Let's, all right, you ready? We're, we're going to do it off the You're top. You're going to say, and I'm Nick. That's the whole thing. Or, and I'm Duckburg, however you want to say it. Okay, <laughs> ready? Hi, everyone. I'm Rachel. And I'm Nick. And this is The Faint Divinities, a channel dedicated to running, playing, and talking about Daggerheart, which is the new tabletop RPG from Darrington Press and Critical Role that is currently in the final stages of development. Uh, for those of you who have been following the channel, you know that we have been on this channel there since March, when the open beta launched, playing through, talking about the updates, and we have a really exciting thing happening today. I always say that when I have my friends on, but I'm so excited uh, to have a friend on today because there have been so many updates recently. I thought it was going to go a little bit dark after the open beta closed, but I am so excited that it is just jam-packed with Daggerheart right now, and my my friend here. Uh, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself to the group? Yeah. Uh, hi, my name is Nick. I was one of the GMs at Gen Con where I got to meet Rachel and all the other amazing GMs that were there. Um, and it was the coolest experience ever because it was like one of those, oh, we'll work together. And then we'll be like, well, but no, we're still all like talking and hanging out and been like, oh my God, tell us how the thing. So it's we been one of the coolest We have our own secret Discord channel. It's the do. best. <laughs> We do. The real the real closed beta was the friends we made along the way. Uh, <laughs> crying crying in the club. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I've also been playing Daggerheart since it first came out. I think my first was 1.2. Mm. Uh, I ran a few games for friends and then I've just been on it since. It's <sighs> It's um, amazing. Um, it's the like it's the story push that I've I've been looking for since everybody has D and D burnout. Yeah, can't yeah. imagine why. Can't imagine why. Yeah, a little bit wild. Hate that for us. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I think that that's really a good kind of segue in to some of the stuff we're going to talk about. And then we are going to dive right into news, guys. So if you are, if you're waiting for that, I promise it's coming. But um, what was your switch moment? I, I'm not saying that you've abandoned Dungeons and Dragons. I don't assume that. But uh, but like, what was your, oh my gosh, Daggerheart, let me try this. What was that moment? So there was a two part switch moment. First moment was, oh my God, no more D&D was the OGL debacle. Um, honestly, I, it hit, like, it hit because it's, it, it, everybody knew it's so easy to market D&D and they just did it the worst way possible. Uh, so I actually kicked from D&D to Pathfinder for a little while. Um, but it's so hard to get people to play Pathfinder. It's so crunchy and I appreciate some crunch, but running on crunch is so much harder. Like I'd love to play as a player in Daggerheart run it, or I'm sorry, in Pathfinder um but running pathfinder is so hard um but i mean daggerheart once it, the first beta was kind of a little like again it was the first beta and a thing and i was like eh, but when 1.2 came out i read everything i was like this is everything i'm looking for so it was like as soon as 1.2 hit and i got to run some friends through it uh, being able to get into it was just like, I don't think I'm coming back. I know. Yeah, it, I had a similar moment. Velocidad in chat, who again, friend of the channel, ro runs an excellent solo play show most of the time, rolling solo, although I guessed on it sometimes, um, is saying seeing the character sheet was my I must play moment. Mm -hmm. So agree. Like I was blown away when I saw how few plus ones, plus twos, plus there were because it just made it more accessible which is one of my big philosophy things so okay um but that's great so again duck and i have kind of and i is it okay to call you duck because that's i literally go great. by anything it i'm doesn't. a golden retriever i'm just happy to be here he really is you guys he's the best like it was so instant friendship at gen con and everything but um but duck and i met there at gen con we're gonna be friends for life and we're gonna see each other uh in december but we'll talk about that a little bit later so um so what is happening in 
dagger heart lately and again i've said this but it's a lot first remember guys if you are new to everything dagger heart is a new tabletop role-playing game similar to dungeons and dragons in that it again is tabletop but also that it's fantasy prior pr primarily right now um if you want to learn more about it go to daggerheart.com i really do feel i'm always called to actioning you guys but i really do feel this is going to be huge in 2025 because if you're not in the know it's the system from Critical Role's publishing house, Darrington Press. So they have a built-in fan group. That's why a lot of us are here. Um, and uh, you, we came for the Critical Role. We stayed for that damn good mechanical system. Okay. Um, so daggerheart.com is where you want to go, but I'm going to be showing you guys a lot more stuff today. The first thing that I want to talk about in news. So remember, in I think July it was. Uh, in July, there was the communication that the open beta was closing. And so I actually, you know that Matthew Mercer and Spencer Stark were doing their routine check-ins and I was in the audience as I always was. And I sent in a question that got answered on stream that was like, so now, now it's all done and are we just never going to hear from you guys again? And I was real sad. And they were like, no, stuff is happening. We can't talk about it. And now we know some of that stuff, guys. So daggerheart.com, definitely get in there. I do want to take uh, a brief moment near the end to show you guys how to get some of those news updates a little bit more. Um, but you can explore the beta. This is a great website at this point for all of the details. You have updates uh, that stopped at 1.5 because now it's going behind the gates. Uh, what is Daggerheart? All of those details. But for the news, the first thing I'm going to talk about is Critical Role is ramping up. Okay. Now it is convention season, obviously, but there's another big reason that it's ramping. We're coming to the 10th year anniversary. Uh huh. Yeah. So they, as an organization, are building a lot of hype around what they're doing. And we are really getting some nom nom treats because of all of that. When did you get, I think you watch Critical Role. When did you get started? I don't know that you're up to date, but do you uh, know so you I, I haven't watched Campaign 3, and that's really because the DD burnout is real. Um, I but I've watched since about halfway through Campaign 1. Um, so I've been in it, like, I've been playing DB since, like, like it's, been, yeah. it's been 10 years. I literally started playing right before uh, my son was born. He's turning 10 this year. So oh I kind of used him for a lot of, like, baseline things. So I've been doing D&D for, like, almost 10 years. That's fantastic. Yeah, I'm right in that same range. So we have similar yeah. stories. I, st I started watching live at the Briarwood arc. Um, so I was right I there would. in, like... Mm -hmm. I was Chroma Conclave, but caught up very quickly. Yeah, yeah. So. Chroma Conclave is still one of the greatest, oh like, God. arcs ever. Oh and any RPG that's ever. It's ever. So good. Campaign one. Oh. Yeah. Oh, anyway, okay. So, guys, 10 year of Critical Role. That means they're doing all these conventions and they're doing all of these panels. So, one of their, the first panel that I remember seeing information about Daggerheart. Oop, gonna scroll past that join our team moment because anytime you see join our team at Critical Role, I go off on tangents. Anyway, um, let's go over to, I'm on YouTube at this point. Ooh, not that. I do not want to share the whole screen. Ooh, well. Okay, maybe I do. Let's give it a check. Let's see how it looks if I do. Not great, but it's okay. Um, so <laughs> there was San Diego Comic-Con, one of the biggest, maybe, I, I struggle to determine if Gen Con is bigger for different reasons, but San Diego Comic-Con certainly is like the most well-known, probably biggest nerd convention that I know of. Um, San Diego Comic-Con 2024, they did a panel. And I have specifically jumped to one of the points when an incredible dude came on because they have guest questions at the end of these panels after they've talked about their exciting things. Um, I'm not going to play this all on stream, especially not with vocal stuff because it just gets a little tricky, but I'm going to play it in the background um, for those who kind of want to see it a little bit more. Let me uh, fix my little panel a little bit so that y'all can see it a little bit better. 
Is that the guy with the, yep, I was going to say the real life Grog Man? Yes, there is a, so again, guys, you can just go to YouTube, and if you're watching the YouTube video, I will have links to everything down below, but there was a person in the audience who had the best Grog voice ever. Um, Rabbit.com, by the way, in our chat, was the first person who linked this to me with the timestamp and everything. Rabbit's great. Um, You love it would love a timestamp. That's why my videos all have timestamps. This guy has a grog voice wearing a strong jaw ale shirt and came up specifically asking, so Daggerheart, you know? Mm-hmm. And a lot of the people in the audience don't even really know yet, right? But there he was like, and I'll do my impression, Daggerheart. <laughs> like, what? Dude, I, I got nothing. Where? I can go deep, but I can't hit the accent on it. It's, yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. My voice is like, so he, he asked, what should we expect for Daggerheart next year? And my Discord, by the way, went a little bit wild with this because you guys know that I have my feelings on it. Um, but I'm not going to get into that today. That's a different topic. But um, the cast was a little bit cryptic. Marisha first said, oh yeah, well, we're so excited about Daggerheart. You're going to see us playing Daggerheart. You're going to see us playing uh, Dungeons and Dragons and other stuff. It was very, um, it was a well-spoken professional businesswoman, I think. There was, so she said, you're going to see us playing Daggerheart. You can almost see them all just like tense. And then she kept going of a, oh, we can't say what we're going to do, but... And then she pitched it over to Travis, who again, guys, Travis is like... CEO extraordinaire. <laughs> CEO of Critical Role, which, um, mm-hmm. you know, love it. Love having a... You know, anyway, so uh, Barbarian running your company, fantastic. Love it. Um, so uh, Travis obfuscated. His feedback was, we don't know what we're doing. You know, we, we're just crazy over here. We're just living our wildest lives. Now... We know, if you're a real big fan, that there is, yes, there's this lightning in a bottle thing at Critical Role, but it's not really unintentional. It's strings and strings and strings. So I think that is the part that made me way more suspicious than even Marisha's. I don't know what this means, but I will say we know Daggerheart's gonna start hitting, okay? Mm -hmm. So... That was the first one. So just FYI, guys, we know that we're getting more Daggerheart. The next one, and this was only a few weeks ago, was Anime NYC. So <laughs> Anime NYC, which I don't know if you were there, Doc. You were, you went to one of them, I thought. Was it just Gen Con? Me and you? Okay. Go. I just did Gen Con. I, yeah. I, there's only so much time on the planet. And so, I couldn't yeah. hit and them we're both. We're going to be at PAX. I would love to do. Yeah, I would love to do Anime NYC, oh but it's... God. Chris from our channel he was like uh i really want to go to that one because he is Mm -hmm. he's he really is like an anime person and everything i love anime too but he's like the the bedtime story anime anime, you know yeah exactly so um anime nyc and again i'm going to start playing this if you guys haven't watched this yes that's the one Uh turn down that audio real quick because again i don't want it to mess with stuff but and also if we sat here watching these this video would be way too long but Go to this one. Again, it'll be linked, but uh, Jenny D was actually hosting this one. Incredible. Mm-hmm. Oh, and Christina Ariel was hosting the other one. They have great people that are hosting these panels. Oh, they both killed it. Uh-huh. And for this one, the interesting thing to me is they really focused on that discussion about the 10 year and getting in there, adding yourself to the newsletter, following socials, because in their words, it's going to be an all year celebration. Okay. It's truly a perfect storm for them with their 10 year anniversary coming up at the exact time that people are trying to find new tabletops. It's, it's perfect for them. Yes. That's where my brain is too, is that in my opinion, there, I mean, it's it's got there's this there's a bump in the road being that it's Dungeons and Dragons 50th an- anniversary, but so we're seeing lots of that stuff, right? Um, but there is that wow factor of Critical Role is huge. They are on 10 year anniversary. Um, 
trailing towards the end, we suspect a lot of us and stuff. Although I don't want them to rush because I like a story to really feel full and fleshed out. But there's so much going on. And then them saying, "Neck, start listening. And by the way, again, this was a couple weeks ago. We're about to talk about some of the things that they were hinting about starting to listen to. Mm. Um, and they said, Matt chimed in on this one and said, because all of them are like, what are you excited about? Oh, well, we have Legends of Vox Mach in a season three coming out oh my god we have um we're excited to see i don't remember all of the things because my brain was listening for daggerheart and then matt mm -hmm. mercer chimed in and said it he said we're cooking. we're cooking up some stuff for daggerheart we're working mm -hmm. hard on daggerheart guys yeah i know rabbit i know and like rabbit said the same thing of this campaign that yeah 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 absolutely so there is so much going on there if you guys are interested in knowing what's kind of on the trajectory, not these are longer panels. They're like an hour, but they have little golden nuggets. When people are mm -hmm. like, Rachel, how do you know this? Because I'm like a hawk in there. I'm like, <laughs> like listening with my ears perked. So that's that piece. We're going to not go directly into what they announced is happening for them because I do want to take a moment to talk about what's happening today. And in fact, you guys can feel free to run away as I say this, though please don't. We'll be done soon and then you can jump over. Um, I said that I want to see more of Daggerheart. Do you know the live show that's happening today? It's okay. Today? Is that the Felicia Day one? Yes! Yeah. Do you know Felicia Day's role in all of this? All I of... don't know her role. Okay. Uh -oh. All right. In Geek okay, and Sundry uh. stuff. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know. Like, I know what she does with Geek. It's like she got them all together. But that, what's she doing go now? Go ahead and give yeah. you give give the audience because I like to break up my mm -hmm. monologues. No, go ahead good. and talk a little bit if you want to give us some of Felicia Day's context in her the background. scene. Yeah. What she means to Critical Role. Felicia's days are the reason there is a critical role. So before we got the Briarwoods and before we got the whatever, the dark time before Briarwoods that we don't talk about for 32 episodes, um, like the group was just a group playing at home. And then Felicia Day pitched them to play it on Geek and Sundry. And it was her company and her, you know, her idea to bring it into the main space and thought that they had it going. Like, she is the the godfather, I guess, the godmother of of Critical Role being a, a group of, like a group online that we all know and get to watch and love. Yeah, she's the person. If you guys want the not the mastermind behind the story and the magic they were making at the table, but the person who saw a gap in the community for having these live these actual plays as we know them today the thing that our channel is based on the person that really saw that and said i want to do it um was Marketing. felicia day it was felicia <laughs> yeah. day um and so i am ex super excited because obviously geek and sundry Critical Role decided to branch off and do their own thing. That makes good business sense. Geek and Sundry went dark, although in two days, Geek and Sundry is also back, you guys. The time is a loop. Time is a loop. Um, but Geek and Sundry is doing uh, goblin mode in like two days with Amy Vorpal. Oh my God, I love her so much. Um, so and, uh, lots of other people too. Danielle Radford, I believe, is also on it. I'm so excited. But back to the point. Today... September 7th. Hi, the final brain cell. <laughs> like, um, today, September 7th, there is a convention, QuestCon, going on in Orlando, Florida. And our friend, Jay, of the Swole Initiative, who's actually in our Discord and everything, he's so fantastic. I've had some really cool conversations with him in other places. He's so cool. Um, he is GMing Daggerheart live for a charity that is live right now. It started up like 20 minutes ago. I think when we close for this, everybody go jump over there. I'm going to actually raid. Okay. Raid so over, yeah. yeah, because Swole Initiative, Jay uh, is GMing and they have special, special guests, you guys. And one of those people is Felicia Day. Okay. So we have, I think, yes. Okay. I have like the page up right now and everything, although it's a little not perfect. Uh, let me see if I can move. Oh, this. Yeah, I know. Oh, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. So 
it's happening today, guys. We have people like, let me get this a little bit smaller so it will fit on the screen. Okay. So again, J Swole Initiative is the person that is GMing for the table. Felicia Day is playing Daggerheart today. She's back, baby. Anjali Bimani, okay, is there. She's at the table, guys. Omar is there at the tables. Um, and then there's one, oh, I, I think there was one other person, and I'm so sorry that I can't remember everyone, but it, oh, Elisa, Elisa is there as well, who has been in the, in the tabletop RPG community for, I don't know, like a decade, like, these people are really huge, but I was most excited about Felicia Day being there because just the return of, again, time is a circle. That is happening today. If you want to jump over to those channels, I will not blame you guys. I get it. Swole Initiative channel is doing it, and Felicia Day's channel is doing it here on Twitch. So, you can also go to my followed channels. Duckberg's on there as well. Um, and you can click into stuff. Yeah, but very exciting. Rabbit.com says time is a funny soup. And Major Paul, hi. I, I know I said hi to you earlier, but I just get so excited. One of the interest you say, one of the interesting bits of history of d d is it, as it currently exists, is how much can be traced to a direct conversation. Major Paul, I'm so glad that you're here because yes, very few of us know this stuff and it's so cool. Between mm -hmm. Ashley Johnson and Felicia Day, that was the door opening. And would D&D &D have existed outside of CR? Of course. But there's a night and day difference having CR exist. And I just think it's fun that you can point on the single moments. I agree. The timeline has these very specific points. And I agree with you. They were playing Pathfinder offline. Mm -hmm. They moved to Dungeons and Dragons for the live stream because I believe Felicia Day wanted it to be Dungeons and Dragons. And yeah, most marketing. for the yeah. marketing, which makes sense. But I always think back of like, what if it had been Pathfinder? Would the terrain be different today? And also, thank you so much to Major Paul for gifting a tier one sub to Rabbit. Hi, Rabbit. <laughs> so um, there's a lot to talk about there. A lot of this is assumption and stuff, but it is a wild time to be here, guys. It's an exciting time to be watching the landscape because stuff is happening. Any thoughts from you, Duck? Yeah, uh, so that story obviously is very famous. So they were playing Pathfinder Moon to 5e, but it does show inflection of things that can be happening in the future they did 5e because it was easier and marketable they didn't necessarily do 5e because they like it was their go-to thing and they've been playing it for so long they did it because it made it easy for people to watch and people to understand it was the most popular there's no real thing holding them to 5e moving forward and like they've done a swap before so i think Daggerheart's going to take over for them and be their main thing uh you and I are aligned. You and I are aligned in what we think. Some people don't believe this. I'm going to be literally right back because someone, it is right over there. I'm grabbing it. But somebody said, MC Cat, Felicia talks about some of it in one of her books. Literally, guys, mm -hmm. stay right, I'm I'll, right back. I, I'll keep them under wraps. Listen, everybody. Rachel's going to go do a thing. We're going to go get the thing. I think it's a book. I don't know what those things are. But we all got to behave. Do not start spamming the chat. That would be horrible. That would be very mean. Yeah, don't start spamming, spamming the chat. How chat. dare you? How dare you even think it? Guys, one of... I read this book this year. I had been meaning everybody spamming the chat. Y'all are so cute. Um, and, uh, yes, you guys, this book, I love it so much. I read it this year for the first time, though I, I, had, I had it years ago and one of my friends stole it and was like, I'll give it back. And they didn't. Felicia Days, and I know it's going to be backwards. You're never weird on the internet, almost. This is, I, I've read a lot of fantasy books this year. This is my favorite book that I have read this year. If you are interested in knowing some of those behind the scenes details, things like pancake breakfasts for making decisions about her future company, mm -hmm. this is where it is. It is so good. She talks so much about that stuff. Rogerian, so many of you in chat have read it. I think if you're a big fan of Critical Role or of tabletop RPG in this space, this is basically like 
a historical text of how we got here. Plus, Felicia Day is such a fun writer. It's so, so good and well written. And the references that she has from people like George R.R. R. Martin, like, you know, mm -hmm. everyone. I mean, her influence on nerd culture in general. Yeah. Is I mean the guild, the guild, right? the guild. Oh, um, Doctor Horrible's sing along uh, blog. sing along blog is With one of my favorite nerd Harris. culture oh. things ever. Like, God. but for her to still have like to do all like these these you know started small, moved up into the big time of, yeah. of but still having that nerd you know background, but then still coming back to the people and still pushing the smaller people has yeah. been. I think Felicia Day is one of the biggest influencers of nerd culture of of this like generation and. And so, like, I, she recently, for those of you who don't know, Felicia Day, she took a little bit of a hiatus on stuff. She's had a child, she's a parent and everything, and her career had gotten very, very overwhelming. She talks about some of that in her book and in interviews and stuff. So I do think that she took a little bit of a step back, but she is really coming back right now, you guys, um, in a huge way. She's also doing 20-Sided Tavern, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and she's coming back in a huge way way i want book 10 and i want guild reunion so bad. guild reunion would be great it's Let's almost go. like there's things happening in the nerd culture that she's really excited about yes. and might be trying to push for friends of hers <coughs> yeah um so i don't know but yeah i am i'm there with you i'm so glad that we get to spin the wheels of this right now because mm. ah yes um she's just felicia day to me is is I don't know if she has like a third eye directly on her forehead or something, but I feel like she's one of those people that you can see kind of having the understanding that thing in the distance. I think that's coming. I'm going to jump into it now. And then she does. And then it's a success. So right now I have to get a 3D printer because she says that 3D printing is coming and I believe her. Oh, it is. It's 3D printing is, is huge, especially yeah. like... Cause... <sighs> It's it's not even like, a, yes, the third eye is, but she just, she has such good inferences on data and just seeing things happening and making good decisions based on that. Like, you can see 3D printing is going to come back because people want to go back to in-person gaming, yes. right? We've spent four years indoors, we like, want friends. being safe. We want to see our friends again. And, like, with that comes the in-person gaming again, which involves 3D printing because you want to make the cool minis and things like that because minis are getting more expensive because companies saw, hey, look, we can make money off it. Now doing it yourself is yeah. it's she understands yeah. just capitalism. She's, yeah, <laughs> she's she knows just, how to jump ahead of it. She's just so smart. And, you know, that is, a, that is a can of worms that I can't even yeah. get into right now of like Dungeons yeah. and Dragons and Watsy and Hasbro and what they're doing because That's they're long discussion they want to take us to video games which i love a video game but please can i have my tabletop and then i will play I, video games separately um and i know that i mostly I have, do i no, i have so many thoughts on what's going on but that is not today that's not today okay is, yeah so quest con orlando happening right mm -hmm. now at the end of this we are going to raid over to uh swole initiatives channel felicia day's channel is also doing it but swole initiative is the smaller of the two we're going there guys um okay. and chris is gonna help me with that because i've never done a raid yet chris is gonna help me um all right, guys, so the next piece that we do need to talk about is we've talked about all this hype, all of these conventions. We're starting to see some bigger marketing pushes, and right? And then Daggerheart, Critical Role, made an announcement. And again, they said, hey, stay tuned. Start watching if you really care because it's going to go fast because they're right. Um, Daggerheart made an announcement about their first live show. And I have it up here on the screen now. Let's see if I can zoom out just a little bit to make it really, oh, whoa, 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 good. Okay, there we go. Ah, it's just never going to be perfect, is it? I'm going to, sorry, guys, I'm going to fix it on the screen instead because it's just worth it. It's just worth it because look at this beautiful cast in their Christmas freaking sweaters. We love some so, Christmas. The very first live show for Critical Role's Dagger Heart system is happening. Chris. In my home. In your freaking home. And guys, oh. okay, so there's been a, a lot bit of. Sound. Yes. <laughs> there's, yeah, a little bit. It's a teeny bit. Yeah. So, guys, um, 
man, I, I, let, let's throw it over back to you, Duck. Where were you when the Daggerheart news dropped? Or what were your feelings initially? At work. Uh, emotionally, I was just so excited. Like, we knew that they were coming to Paxio. They had discussed that. We had heard We had heard a little insider early that they were definitely coming to Paxio. Um, but we didn't know exactly what it was going to be. If it was just going to be like, oh, they'll have a table or whatever. And then they're like, uh, the whole cast is doing a panel at Paxio. And we're like, oh. Like, I was exciting. And then, like, the second they announced, like, a game... First of all, everyone's like, how are you going to have a game in a different state when they're at the other one? Nobody understands the tri-state area and how small it is. <laughs> like, the entire tri-state area is, like, half the size of Texas. But it's just like, no, it's only, like, 10, 15 minutes away in, like, a stadium. Yeah, yeah. Like, so, it's going to be so cool. Yeah. So to, to recap, guys, PAX Unplugged is another one of these conventions similar to Gen Con. It focuses on tabletop specifically. That's the unplugged part of PAX. PAX mm -hmm. has East, PAX has West, PAX has PAX Unplugged. That's in Philly, Philadelphia, yes. okay? And Philly. December 6th <laughs> through the 8th. Um, yes. So right at Christmas time, too. And I'm from a hot state. I'm ready to. I'm ready for Christmas in Philly. Um, so... Uh, I had already wanted to go to PAX Unplugged, um, and I was talking with some other people about GMing for other stuff that I was ex excited about, but not, it's but not, not Daggerheart, you know? Um, but, uh, but so I was already looking into things, and then they announced this, this show, and I had already mm. told Chris, I was like, when they do the first, because I really wanted to go to the Candela one, and I we didn't get to go out, but I was like, I would have loved to, yeah. But I said, when the Dagger Heart one drops, I'm going. And then mm -hmm. he was like, yeah, of course, we're so close to LA, of course. Oh yeah, and then it happened in Philly. <laughs> like so, um, let's talk like, about this no. though. Yeah. The reason this is so important to me, guys, this is gonna be a silly little segment, but guys, years and years ago, Liam O'Brien ran a one shot one of his first one shots for the channel on critical role that was called a night before Christmas. Christmas mm -hmm. being christmas for critters christmas christmas used to be huge in the community when they were still pretty small we would like i never did but a lot of people would send in presents send them gifts mm -hmm. they, would they used to have like, opening streams yes and i was and, and they, we would all i was in my own home you know like introvert that i am drinking my coffee in my christmas pajamas and watching them like oh, what did you get sent oh my god a mini of pike it was so cute mm -hmm. and so liam o'brien who loves gming and loves giving the gift of stories he made the night before christmas which is still on youtube i watch it every year like a goddamn holiday special yeah, right, that's, right. that's where Chetney came from. That's uh, Yes. For yeah. those of you who don't freaking know, time is a freaking loop. Chetney, Chocolate Cane, I believe, was mm -hmm. was the character that Travis built for A Night Before Christmas. Mm -hmm. And then he brought it to Campaign 3. And those of us who had watched that were like, oh my god, my baby, the crazy man who... Spoiler. Who tried did to nothing? kill Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, <laughs> Chetney did nothing wrong. Listen, uh, I agree. So good. So when they announced this, when they announced that they were going to make one of my favorite things that has ever existed, that they were going to make this for Daggerheart, another one of my favorite things that has ever existed at Christmas time in a cold place in, by the way, Jersey, where Liam O'Brien is from, mm -hmm. where Sam Regal's mother, Momlin, is from. Mm -hmm. I was, I, there was no turning back. I immediately started calling. Well, first I spammed you and I was like, Hey, you live nearby. I'm gonna need, um, I'm gonna need to stay on that couch. You <laughs> know, like, so, like, so, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So anyway, guys, this is happening to give you the, the, the details is that, and, and I think you're right, Major Paul, it was Chutney in Chutney. the original. Yeah. He changed it to Chutney. Yeah. Legally distinct. Legally yeah. distinct. Yeah. Yeah. We represent, but are legally distinct from the, like, yes. Um, uh, so PAX Unplugged, where all of this ties together, the 6th through the 8th is PAX Unplugged in Philadelphia. They are doing this in Camden. It is a 10 minute drive. It is right across the river. So this is Philadelphia PAX Unplugged, Camden, New Jersey, Critical mm -hmm. Role Live, okay? Daggerheart. 
10 minute drive. If you're going to one, you can go to the other. The tickets are still available, but they are selling fast. Are they, are they still, I was, I was gonna check. Are they still available? I don't know. Go, if you're I'm, watching I'm now and you wanna go, you have to go get tickets now because they are selling so fast. I, I was there at like, they went live to people. If you have a Beacon Resale. membership, mm -hmm. Then they did pre-sale. I was there at pre-sale and it was like watching lights go out across the world. All the seats that were, I was like, oh my God, please, I just need two. And um, so go get your seats. I'm going to try to get this video uploaded You're to YouTube. Out fast. It's fast. It's fast. The lawn's gone. I don't even think they were doing the lawn, but yeah, the middle sections are already gone. Yeah. These are going fast. Yeah. This okay. is different. Some people, because, you know... Candela Obscura is wonderful and a lot of people love it, but it it hasn't, if I'm right, done the numbers that it's a very done. niche setting. Just like it. So the people the people who are gonna it's gonna hit and I'm not comparing it, but it's gonna hit kind of like uh, Cult of Cthulhu, Call of Cthulhu, where yes. you're gonna hit that niche market that wants that Eldritch Horror thing, and you're gonna hit it well, yeah. but you're not gonna get the widespread hit. Yeah. The one thing I'm worried, I was worried about before this happening was um, Darrington Press going the free league style. Yeah. And instead of pushing one big thing, it yeah. just come out game after game after game, which is great because free league is amazing. I love it. But, oh, they're pushing Dagger Heart. Yeah, just, just. Me too. Yeah. I think I told uh, Chris again, I was like, when, when we were talking about things that were getting marketed and there was like Candela Week or something. I was like, he was like, no, I want to see them pushing Daggerheart. And I said, I think that mm -hmm. this is the Candela push before they go all mm -hmm. in on Daggerheart. And I think I'm right. We'll be right back. All good. So, guys, while uh, Duck is gone, no problem. Uh, don't spam chat demanding that he returns immediately. No, it's it's all it's all fine. Just kidding. Um, just just yell at him a little bit. Um, so, oh, you know what I could do? That's really fun, guys. While we're while he's gone, I'm gonna torture him a little bit and show you uh, that he has um, his own Twitch channel. He's currently offline because he's over here. Um, but Duck has his own Twitch channel, and he hasn't actually been online and oh my god is that eight months bully him bully this man into getting back into streaming uh he used to do all kinds of stuff we could look through his videos we won't but also it'll come up later um but there is even down here a little wish list of stuff that's mostly for his duckling and i think it'd be super cute if we got him i don't know like a five dollar toy or something that'd be very cute um nobody has to nobody feel pressured everybody feel very pressured so i'm gonna go ahead and start just really wrapping down on this pax thing so the the real emphasis here is that it is happening in just under 100 days for christmas i will be there if any of you guys are going to be there please come say hi to me um I'm going to be at all of PAX Unplugged. Chris will be there. I know that Duck will be there. So we're all very excited. A lot of us are going to be there. But I love also chat going off with stuff. So, um, and by the way, this tells you a lot about other things as well. If you really want to dig into this piece, it tells you what is Daggerheart, how to get tickets. He's coming back. Uh, their event schedule. <laughs> Hi, welcome back. <laughs> their, their events. I'll yell at you. Continue. I don't want to cut off your your thing. But their event but... schedule and um and also very importantly, guys, I'm gonna try to zoom in on this. Okay, um, this Darrington Press is also making its way to Philadelphia for PAX Unplugged from December sixth to eighth. Stay tuned for upcoming information about how you can play Queen by Midnight, Quarter Past, Daggerheart and other games from Darrington Press Collection at PAX Unplugged. This is very important, guys. This is telling us, again, that not only will Critical Role be there, not only will they have a live show, but they will also be running games of Daggerheart that community members can get in. If you didn't get in in Gen Con and you want to get in now, this is where it is. Proceed with your yelling if you'd like. You're good. I just come back here and I see my name all over. There's no being nice to me here. <laughs> That's not how we do this. I'll cry live on stream. You don't understand. That would I'll, be so good for oh, views. Me. Do it. <laughs> oh, me. I will start crying. Don't start this. 
<laughs> um, but no, I'm very excited to the fact that they're because we weren't sure they weren't sure how much they were going to be there, and to see them say, "Hey, we're going to have games there." You know, mm -hmm. and then now we just have to do the part where we're like, oh, you're running games. Yeah. You know who's going to be there anyway. Maybe you want to have a nice Rachel over here. Maybe you want to have a nice, a nice friend, Duck Nick. You know, let's, let's, who knows, you know? Who knows? If you don't have to, like, room and board us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you don't no, 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 no. We're already there. We're already, we're already there. there. Just just bring it to me. And, you know, in and the also. In theory, obviously. This is all theoretical. Oh, all theoretical. But also, while we're talking about theory, it would be, you know, I... I couldn't get the tickets for like the VIP sections or anything, which guys, mm -hmm. it's like a 45 minute pre-show where you get to help do character creation. I just, I do my finances right now and I was like, it's not mm -hmm. fiscally responsible. So I Same. I got the cheap seats and that's, I'm very excited about it. But you know, man, it would be crazy if somebody were like, Rachel, you've been such a, such an advocate for Daggerheart. <laughs> you want to come backstage? <laughs> no kidding. I'm wow, kidding. all these cool GMs that have been really pushing Daggerheart really big on their personal you know because how did critical role get big by word of mouth word and people mouth. talking Grassroots. like what if what if there was a grass move movement for daggerheart which we talked about gen con because we, we were like they haven't marketed it really and I, we both of us were just like if they're not gonna do it we'll do it. it and then of yeah. course they started marketing really heavily but like, they heard us we're gonna they do it us. anyway yeah so anyway um if you're going to PAX Unplugged, we will be there. We're very excited. Um, yeah, even and if you don't go into a game, I mean, I know Rachel, but I'll just be hanging out. So, like, oh, yeah. find a way to get in touch with me and be like, hey, I want to come say hi. And I'll yeah. come give you a tiny little plastic duck. Oh, my god! That's gosh. my go-to thing. That's, That's my so go-to. Like, hey. And, and I'll give you a business card because I'm a goddamn professional. I'm not kidding. Like, like no. I guess, I I don't have anything to give. Six months <laughs> off. There is no professionalism in me. <laughs> Listen, we got to play more Daggerheart. That's the real answer. There it is. Okay, so that's that piece is the live show announced. And the last big piece that we need to talk about is, <clears throat> and I have to be super cautious with this piece, okay? because there's NDA stuff involved. And I am not saying NDA stuff for me. I'm not saying NDA stuff for Jack. I am just saying there is in non-disclosure agreement stuff in circulation. And mm -hmm. If any, so I will be presenting this from a totally above the level place. Please nobody talk or ask or suggest anything about further details. It's too much. But it, if you ask if we have the NDA, you're getting a stress. Yeah, that's exactly right. Max <laughs> stress, vulnerable immediately. Um, so the the again, I always make this joke. I don't know why I always have this right here, but the action tracker is in play. No, it's not. Um, so this is my call to action, guys. Get into the Darrington Press Discord if you are interested in knowing stuff that is happening in the community. Get into the Darrington Press Discord. Uh, I thought I was already there. I'm going to hope that I haven't. I thought, uh, give me just a second. I'm going to hide this so that I can get over. Doo -doo -doo. Because I don't want to share that URL bar in case I put anything very embarrassing. Like, how big is a normal balloon? I don't know what I said. We run games for a living. There's no limit to what we've Googled. Yeah, it, yes, exactly. Like, I, I recently realized it was like, how quickly does rigor mortis set in? And I was like, please I mean, don't. who hasn't Googled that, though? Yeah, listen, like... don't put me on a list. Okay, guys. So, this is a different website. I've showed you three today, daggerheart.com, critroll.com, and this one is the Darrington Press Discord. Now, I am going to have to fix this just slightly. Every website is a little bit different and the sizing gets wild, guys. Mm -hmm. But the Darrington Press Discord, do, my dudes, if you want to know what is happening with Daggerheart or anything before everyone else, if you want to be in, you need to go to DarringtonPress.com. It's very easy. And then scroll down. You know how my little thing is always scroll down. Scroll down. I really would advocate for this Discord button being more prominent or looking more like a Discord button. But this, in point of fact, is the Discord button. It is right there on the side of the screen, okay? I am also going to put in here the Darrington, ooh, command, if I can, Darrington, press, there we go. 
I've put a command in because I'm tired of telling y'all to go to the Discord and trying to explain how, just click that link in the Twitch chat, okay? Go here. Because as an example, we knew that the open beta closed. And also, hi, um, SG Wonder. It's so good to see you. First time chat. Friendship. Um, we knew that when the open beta closed, right at the beginning of Gen Con, it was end of July, 1.5, we knew that they were going to be closing the gates and doing further development. But we didn't know what that would look like. And in point of fact, I thought they would all be in-house from that point forward. Okay. It's not. They reached out to the people in the Darrington Press Discord exclusively, I think. I don't think anybody else got this. It wasn't posted to Instagram. No like, emails or anything. There yeah. were no emails. It was quiet. But if you were in there, there was an announcement broadcast that said, Hey guys, we're going to be play testing some additional functions, some final changes and tweaks. We're going to do a closed beta. It will be under a non-disclosure agreement, which is why I'm not going to talk about it much. It will be NDA'd, but if you'd like to participate, reach out. And some of us did, and that's as much as I will say about that. <laughs> a lot of people were really interested, um, and some people have gotten in, some people have not, um, but there's other stuff happening too. So... I'm not going to give you the secrets because the secret is go talk to the secret keepers. It's the Darrington Press Discord. That company yep. is in there, okay? And the this mods in there are just amazing. They communicate very well. They reach out. Uh, they listen to really bad questions because somebody forgot to hit the next button when they're trying to fill out the survey. Um, but yeah. they're they're amazing in there. They're so good. And if they don't have the answer, they are so good about saying, let me get back to you. And they get mm -hmm. the answer for you, you know. Um, so I cannot advocate strongly enough for the Darrington Press Discord. It is so fun in there. The community is fun and vibrant and excited for the future of gaming. Um, you have all the people that work at Darrington Press in there. And a lot of them are pretty vocal and stuff. So you could ask your heavy hitting questions about mechanics that maybe you're not quite sure of for like some of your favorite games like Queen by Midnight. We did a whole for the queen uh, post by post game that I was a big so person cool. in. It was so fun. So join that. I had that queen by midnight sitting, uh, still wrapped up from Gen Con. I'm like, I need to find a night to play that with friends. Oh my God. All their games have been so good. That's but that's what I'm saying. Like, I was so worried they were going to become like a free league where they're just going to publish game after game after game, which is fine as a business oh model if that's what yeah. you're going to do. But I really wanted them to push Dagger Heart and seeing the Critness thing came come up, and I was like they're 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 really gonna push dagger heart and that made me so happy they really yeah they really are it's so exciting so i have called to action cta'd this in my project manager vocabulary a lot but guys if you want the information yeah come here i like being your one-stop shop for information but if you really want the information days before i have time to film just go to that link it will get you all the information and you're getting it from, right from the horse's mouth why is that a phrase horse's mouth you know because mr ed was a horse of, of peanut course, butter of course yeah. And nobody talks to a horse of course unless okay <laughs> <laughs> anyway all right so uh, Oh, but like, yeah, go to Darrington Press for the information and then come back here for the insights about the information exactly. because, yeah, you know. this is for the chatsies. This is yeah. for the very demure, very <laughs> cutesies. Nope. Very chaotic. Such anxiety. No yeah. demure here. I don't think I've been demure a day in my life. Nope. I, I, had like... to, I had to Google what demure meant. I'm like, nope. That's not me. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, listen, not a, never. I'm I'm your loud friend and I'm never going to stop because I enjoy being the loud friend. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. That is really the bulk of what I wanted to talk about today in terms of just 
Daggerheart and what is going on and our look to the future, we could again spin our wheels for a long time on theorizing and philosophy and everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, and um, game theory behind things and where the tabletop community is going and blah, blah, blah. We have these talks just, but yeah, newsworthiness right now is yeah. just their marketing. Yeah. And that's, I think, something a lot of people were worried about, but they're doing it. They're yeah. doing the marketing thing. They're doing it, and we're doing it. We're all helping, and and also it feels like Christmas every day right now. Being a person in this community, I'm so sorry, I misspoke. It feels like Christmas every day, right? Now. So, um, anything that I missed? Oh, um, one thing that Matt did kind of gloss over a little quickly, and it was something that, where you were saying where. Uh, Daggerheart's very fantasy based and everything in one of those clips he brings up the fact that he is very excited to move into different settings with Daggerheart I know I know so we oh could get God. a horror we can get a sci-fi we can get a kids on bike style like like in modern era and I think that's that's really exciting to be able to see like that's what splat books will be that's what source books are going to be it's not going to be like and again, there could be other things where like, oh, we're going to make different classes and things like that. But it's also going to be settings and like, it's not going to be set, you know, stuck with like, oh, this is the friend. It's going to be, hey, make your own world. But here's some ideas to make it yours for very different settings. And that's going to keep the game fresh. Yes, absolutely. That's something that I really like to advocate for is we're playing imagination station you know this is imagination land so Mm -hmm. it's fantasy right now if you guys if if we support this product though they're going to add more stuff matt has already one of the things that i am very excited about because i love a silly goofy time i also really love a serious story where mm-hmm. there's like stuff happening i'm not necessarily like a um a a call of cthulhu monster person necessarily but i love like oh my god this choice that i have to make who do i say if mother yeah. like i love that um and he has hinted at dark souls Mm-hmm. That's what he referenced. Yeah, he did say a Dark Souls oh kind of vibe. God, yes. I want a Dark Souls like, game. Um, so like, yeah. So them having all these different, like, already have all these different ideas is really like, okay, yeah. they're they're attached to it. And uh, a good shot. Spencer Stark is just such a great game designer. Guys, speaking... Spencer Stark is. So, I I I have to talk about this, and I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'll do it. Allison, but yes. My God, guys. They're making a movie. They're making a movie. I know. (laughs) Guys, Spencer Stark, who is, again, one of the lead designer on Daggerheart. The reason that he was chosen is because he's got the fucking chops. He's the guy, okay? And as evidence of that, he has worked for other people in the arena, like Hunter's Entertainment, um, which, by the way, was Ivan Van Norman was one of the leaders, the main people at Hunter's Entertainment, and now he is the lead at Darrington Press. Spencer Stark made this game a silent role-playing game. It is incredible. I have wanted to play it for so long. If you're in the Discord, you saw the posts that I made about it after playing it last weekend. I cried so Mm -hmm. hard. It was so embarrassing. Um, Love it, love it, love it. Play this game. Cry and and then message me about it. Join Mm -hmm. our Discord and then message me about it. That's there are two Discords that you need to join. You know, you got to go to the Darrington Press one. You got to go to ours. There's two. Keep that up. It's gonna look at look like my Discord thing was just like yes, too many. Yeah, a hundred percent, absolutely. And and don't worry, I'm already there. (laughs) I'm already there. But uh, Spencer Stark made Alice is missing. This is an incredible role playing game. The setting is totally different from like a fantasy driven Mm -hmm. one. It's the real world. One of your friends has gone missing. You have to figure out where they went. And the the format is incredible. If you play this game, you can feel the fingerprints all over Mm -hmm. Daggerheart. Of and by the way, not all of it is Spencer Stark's um, invention. Ivan Van Norman recently did an interview where he said convergent evolution I think Mm -hmm. of systems all seeing someone else innovate something and they're like oh my god I love that okay okay let's pull that collaborative storytelling oh my god I love that yeah that's really good so you you have like something that defines you 
convergent evolution in the tabletop space is what gives us these systems. Um, Spence, this is, I, I try to be very polite and I will, I will still say this in a professional way. I feel like Hasbro, because I, I feel like they, for Dungeons and Dragons, I love Dungeons and Dragons, I feel like they lost the plot when we're talking about staying in tune with the community and caring about pulling from the, because they made a thing that it was incredibly and is incredibly successful. So in their minds, they're like, why would I try other stuff? This is what works. The problem is that's what worked 10 years ago. We're different people now. We grew, our experiences changed and became plus threes and new experiences. And we took some of them out of our character sheets and made new ones. Dungeons and Dragons never did. Systems like Daggerheart, though, are going to grow with the community. Mm -hmm. So as long as it's done right, yeah. I mean, Five E was big because it did what Daggerheart's doing is taking things. Advantage and disadvantage was such a simple concept that hadn't been done in a big tabletop thing, but it's such a like cool, like interesting, and like dice usage, right? Like, but they took that from. What Daggerheart does really well, and it's something that 5e did really well, was take concepts from board games yes. and integrate it into tabletop. You, playing with dice, making the dice do what you want is such a board game concept. And like that's what D&D did really well, because it, it makes it so easy to learn. Because you've played a board game. Mm -hmm. Everyone's played a board game. Then you just add acting to a board game. That's all it is. And da I think Daggerheart really has pushed it. I mean, even the character sheet we were talking about, like, that was one thing that did because it made me feel like I was playing, like, like Gloomhaven or something. Like, I was playing a board game with it. So, yeah. yeah. I agree, you know, like, that, that the character sheet for this system, you know, you'll see my laminated one because I play all the time, but my, <laughs> my health and everything, it's just, it still yeah. feels like the tabletop that we're used to. And then when you dive in, you really see the little... The differences play out in such a vivid way. Um, God, I love the system. Okay, all right. Sorry, I know this is a new show. I want to keep it pretty tight. You're good. Anything yeah. else, though, Duck? Anything else that you can think of that we should talk about from news? I think we hit everything on the news front. Okay. The, yeah. If you're okay to stay for just a couple minutes longer, I think yeah. I really just want to ask you... Oh no, I lied, I'm busy. <laughs> get, get, get your ass, no, get, get, like, um, uh, I just, because we got the opportunity to talk to other GMs in mm -hmm. our round table, and I'd really like to- I was working. Yeah, I know, <laughs> but I, I, I you, you, Duck and I became friends immediately, and I, I really want to get some of your thoughts too. Um, sure. So my first one is, what do you love? Or hate, we could be critical about Daggerheart. You know, what's your feedback? The system. Mm -hmm. I love the pacing. Um, as a highly active GM, and being able to do it in person at Gen Con so much was so different because I've I had only played online before, but being able to do it in person, the pacing of the game is my absolute favorite. If you can teach people to say, I rolled a blank with hope, blank with fear just to get that vibe going, the pacing of combat, because the, the worst part about 5e is when you're stuck in combat for three hours. So being in that and just the fast pace is 100% my favorite part. Um, I don't know. I, like, I, I want them to expand on it more. I think it would be my, but it's obviously still in, in closed beta. Um, I think some of the terminology could definitely use some use some work. Uh, they put a lot on the GM understanding a, a rules as intended, which is fine for people who have a lot of GMing experience and they've hit that first. But like, there's a lot of people ask questions about the rules all the time. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even think that would possibly be a question, but I could see somebody who's not used to it yeah. having that question. And I think that comes from being a smaller, uh, smaller company and not having that, uh, that same like, uh, think tank kind of behind it who would can who can bring somebody in from the outside and look at this and be like i have no idea what this means 
Yeah. Um, and that's something fixable, but I hope they do kind of lean I in think, and fix that. I think that's really why we got things like the open beta is because they were like, listen, we know we're just like a few people in a think tank inside of an echo chamber, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, who play games for a living and can, yeah. you know, who can infer the rules much better. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I, and, and I, and this, this is, again, I'm not going to talk about it. Join the Darrington Press Discord because they're talking about stuff that might help with that. Um, yeah. I'm not going to talk about it, but <laughs> okay. Yeah, but like even that, like if you get into a Discord, if you're going into the effort of joining a Discord and doing all that, you probably have the background. I'd love to see them to reach out to people who have no tabletop experience. Yes. Because that's how you get new people, this right? Is, 5e was popular because it was so easy to learn. And yeah. we don't want to, like, I don't want to compare it to 5e. It's its own thing. But if you want to make a big, you got to kind of do that a little bit. You know um, the rubric. You know the rubric. Exactly. Somebody else has already done it. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. Exactly. We just have to improve upon it. Yeah. So, it's, yeah, getting the verbiage, I think, and getting those people from outside the community in will be huge. Yeah. That's one of the reasons why everybody knows at my tables, I brought not one, but two people out of my four players. Two of them had never played any tabletop before mm-hmm. because I wanted to see what it felt like for newbies. Same thing in other tables that I'm planning and stuff. I want new people because I want to see how learnable, how teachable is this system. It's important. Looking for, I've totally never played tabletop before if you're looking for players. I'm always looking for friendship and players. Yes, yes, yeah, 100%. Absolutely. And we are going to talk, yes, um, especially a GM. So anyway, yeah. um, so this next piece, oh, real quick. Rabbit is talking about, very briefly, Dark mm-hmm. Carnival as a concept. Oh if, I've the, read some of their stuff. It's yes. so and I love it. Yeah, it's Rabbit so is sharing his own con- their own concepts in our discord about the dark carnival that they are working on guys if y'all want a really cool setting go look at our discord there's a lot about it and yeah i think cool. that's one of my favorite things that's going to be coming out of this as well it's so homebrewable so homebrewable yeah because the mechanics of the game mechanics are light touch like, and like the 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 whole like you can make any class by just combining two um domains together yes. like the yeah. home is going to be so good. It's going to be so, be so good. good. And then Major Paul also, I want to read this because it is in agreement with you. Agree 1,000. Ooh, yes. 1,000% duck. How they communicate to New Blood is going to be crucial. We need lots of Deborah Ann Wall taking, talking to John Bernthal. 100%. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's a key success story here is that Critical Role has some of the most passionate fans sometimes there's a dark edge to that passion but a lot of the time yeah as any fandom but a lot of the time you get people like me you get people like major paul people like mc cat rabbit you duck you know people who i am so motivated to teach people this system i had fallen out of love with teaching people about D &D 5e because i had to always caveat of you're going to spend a lot of money to pick out like a couple of things from each book because a lot of it is not really, it's just, they're just mm-hmm. trying to push out. Um, that's not what's happening here. So, um, no. okay. Wrapping up my last mm-hmm. question for you, Doug is, and this is one of my favorite questions. What Uh-oh. are your hopes or fears for oh, the future God. of Daggerheart, Darrington press or tabletop RPG? The marketing on this. Okay. Uh, we're going to start with the fear. My fear. Okay. And obviously, this is a very deep-seated fear because we've seen it, is that it gets hit the same way that Wapsy got hit, is some big company buys it out and it becomes what's happening. It, and it's possible, right? At any point, they're not going to be able to do this forever and they sell off the company and something happens and we're just in a spiral. Like you said, time is a circle. Time but a circle, yeah. Uh, with my hope on that, and this won't be much, but to connect to hope with it, my hope is just like what's happening here, if that does happen, somebody does step up. Yeah. Right? The next generation of stepping up comes in and makes something new, and there's always an improvement. Yeah. Uh, my actual hope is, I mean, it's coming true, is they really push, um, they really push Daggerheart. They're really doing it. I, I just, I hope Daggerheart, I hope Daggerheart is good enough that Watsy figures their crap out. Because I do, I care about the company. I do care about the company. They got me through so many years of just like 
they got me through so much. And I don't want them to see what they are now. And I want them to get it together. And I, I hope something like this, and there's a lot of companies doing it, but I hope that Dagger Heart's the one that really makes them take a step back, maybe get sold. <clears throat> um, and like, go back, go back to their roots of like, we're not a video game company. We are not a, we're not going to push out Baldur's Gate 2025, like as an EA game. Um, because anybody who's played a Madden knows what happens there. Um, yeah. And yeah. just like, yeah. Yeah, and we like, don't need another store for outfits. Please just give me outfits, you know? Like, that's, and just, like, I know, I just, I hope they just go back to what their core tenants were. And I can only imagine what some of the people who were there at the beginning of 5e, like, who have to work there, it's their job, right? It's like their livelihood are feeling like seeing what's happening to something that they cared about so much. Yeah. That's, I think, one of the reasons that we made such close friends so quickly is that we are very aligned in terms of what we like and love and want out of the community. When I say, I want Daggerheart to be the next big thing, I hate the vernacular of the Dungeons and Dragons killer. I don't want anything... That would break my heart if ever there was a time when Dungeons and Dragons wasn't something that people were excited to play. The mm -hmm. problem is, is I think we're getting there now. And I think it's because they've gotten out of touch with what we really want and what we care about and who we are. Mm -hmm. I want Daggerheart or other systems, sure, Cosmere, DC20, what, whatever, what have you. But I think Daggerheart has a really good chance. And that's why they're my horse in the race, mm -hmm. is that I want want something to step in that is so formidable that the other side has to then look and say, oh, we need to pay attention. We need to see what are they doing? Oh, they're not using AI? Okay, okay, okay. We really, what we keep saying we won't use AI, but we're not going to use AI now because we know that that's important to these people, you know? Um, yeah. We're, we're going to make sure that future versions are backwards compatible and not on first launch remove all of the 2014 stuff from our system and say, well, you can type it back in if you want. They, okay, and they're not I know doing that anymore. Gonna go on, yeah, I know. But I know we kept saying we're, they keep making the same mistake yeah. of underestimating the community. Yeah. yeah. Of like, maybe we'll sneak it. And I feel like it's on purpose because they're just saying, okay, what can we do that won't piss them off to get a good... And it's... Uh, it's it's a, it's a new show, not a complaint about Hasbro yeah. show. <laughs> I, I, and again, all of this, Here's I want, the news. All, I want people to hear all of this criticism from a place of constructive criticism. Oh, yeah. I, I am upset because I care and I love and I want Dungeons and Dragons to remain viable and good and wonderful forever. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I just, I hope that at some point all of this in the common vernacular, and especially this, that people who some of their paycheck relies on playing Dungeons and Dragons, they can't say, that's not me. So I hope yeah. that they hear some of this and they say, oh, that's a good point. Maybe, we, maybe we'll stop throwing evil spaghetti at the wall to see what sticks. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's it, guys. We've gone to a little bit over. So um, thank you so much for joining, Duck. Thank you for having me. And um, what are you doing? Do you have anything to pitch? I know you have your Twitch, which I did a oh, little bit. Uh, okay. What do you have? I'll come like back. Uh, so right now I don't have anything. Um, there is, There was things going on, and then I kind of took a break, so we're taking a step back. But soon, TM, there will be a return to twitch.tv slash Duckberg. Eventually, we'll see um where we just vibe and we, we we talk about things we did some tabletop stuff um but you know I, i'm i'm out and about um all the socials are duckberg um I, I don't know how duckberg was never taken but i've had it for years so <laughs> everything is duckberg uh if it's not duckberg it's duckberg ttv but it will be around um so keep an eye out and we'll be back soon uh out other than that i'm in the different discords i'm in faint divinities discord come hang out we're always talking talking daggerheart we sure are, and we're going to be talking about it forever. Yes. Because we're fans. Okay, um, that's everything, guys. Again, thank you for... Actually, I'm so sorry. It's almost everything. Am I right? Um, just real quick, is your birthday uh -oh. next week? Who told you this? I told you. I'm not an investigative reporter, but I should be. <laughs> like, so everybody...
everybody. Um, just as a quick no, little final no. piece, it's our good friend Doug's birthday on September 13th. I have concerned. We're going to talk. <laughs> Okay, so guys, if you if you want to give him just a little gift, go follow him on Twitter no, for his birthday. No. I'm going to take us right back over there just like I did before Duckburg right there. Go say happy birthday in the chat. Go follow them on Twitch TV. And if you want to be really cool, because I'm going to do it no matter how much he hates me down at the bottom, he does have a little place with a wish list. And there are certain things you could even oh, just only oh like. Oh, God, that thing is so outdated. <laughs> well, listen, it might be time to add something to it. <laughs> like, but, but guys, thank you. Thank you so much, um, Duck, for being here with us today. And thank happy early me. birthday. And thank you. I'll see you at PAX Unplugged. And yes. we'll talk way before that, like tomorrow. I'm actually I'm... specifically not speaking to you until back. Oh, okay, we'll now. see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, everybody, so much for joining again. If you're in chat, I know there's only a few of us, but stay in. We're going to do a raid, okay? So stay in. You'll be deposited over to Daggerheart very shortly. I love Whoa. you, everybody, and goodbye. 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 goodbye.